What's going on guys? In this video we're going to be discussing chain, chain from iterable, and zip longest. So we are continuing our iter tools playlist. Alright, so first what we're going to do is import all the necessary modules. So I'll run this and you'll see I'm getting iter tools, chain, zip longest, as well as a random from string I'm importing ASCII letters. Uh, ASCII letters just allows you to generate random ASCII letters. I've actually made a video on this called the file name generator so you guys could check that out as well. And then we have func tools import reduce. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is tackle chain and chain from iterable. Now chain allows you to chain multiple iterables and you'll see here I'm creating three different iterables x, y, and z. x is going to be type list and y and z are going to be tuples. So the first one, x, is just a list consisting of uh, 10 different numbers ranging from 0 to 9. And then we have a tuple that will randomly sample from the ASCII letters and take three of those characters. And then we have another tuple, which is just two numbers, uh, 2 and 5. So you've noticed that I've purposely used a list and tuple as my iterables because I want to emphasize that chain can take all types of iterables and join them together. So now, for clarity, what I'm going to do is run or print out each of the three iterables. So we'll run this first to assign them to their respective variables. And now I'll have x, y, and z. So I'll print them out. So x is from 0 to 9, y is just three random ASCII letters, and z is a tuple. All right. So now what I'm going to do is run chain on x, y, and z. So you'll notice that chain takes multiple iterables as its input. So it's taking three different iterables, x, y, and z, as its input, and it returns back an iterator, which you will need to exhaust using list to get the full output. If you have questions on iterators, I've actually made a video on it within my Python concept, so you can check that out as well. All right, so if we run this, we should see all three iterables joined. So 0 to 9, ISN, and 2, 5. All right. So list usually has a built-in operator, x plus y, which allows you to join two different lists. But with list, you have to make sure that x and y are lists itself. And with chain, you can add various different types of iterables. So that is one of the limitations with the plus operator when dealing with uh, iterables. You have to make sure they are the same type. So something like x plus y, I can't do because it can only concatenate list, not tuple to list. And that's why I guess we have something like chain, which allows us to chain multiple iterables. Now despite being useful, chain does have a limitation, and that is with nested iterables. So chain can't take a single input and unnest that single input. You'll notice that chain usually takes multiple iterables, if I go up here, it takes x, y, and z. So the inputs are multiple inputs or multiple iterables. And it can't take a nested iterable and unnest it. So we're going to create z, which is going to take x and y, which is two different iterables. So you'll see now they're nested within z. Now if I use list chain z, I get back the same iterable because chain only chains multiple different iterables. However, that's where chain dot from iterable comes into play. So chain dot from iterable will take a single nested iterable and unnested. So the key difference between chain from iterable is that the original chain will take multiple iterables or multiple inputs and the chain from iterable will just take one input and it will unnest it. So once again, X, Y, Z will take multiple iterables and join them together. And chain from iterable will take one single iterable and unnest it. All right. So if we look again at Z, we'll see that Z has a couple of iterables as items. So what we want to do is we want to unnest them and join them to create one single iterable. So if I run this, you'll see that it was able to take Z and unnested, so from 0 to 9 and ISN. So once again, 
chain formidable takes one input and unnests it. So if you have a nested input and you want to unnest it, you use chain formidable. But if you have multiple iterables and you want to join them, you use chain. All right, so that's the basics of chain and chain from iterable. And now what we're going to do is look at zip longest. All right, so first we're going to run x and y again. Just a reminder, x is from 0 to 9, and y is just three random characters. And now we're going to look at the limitations of zip. So if we use zip, um, first I'll explain what zip is. Zip basically takes each element of x and each element of y and joins them together. So if I run this, you'll see that 0 is paired with i, 1 is paired with s, and 3 is paired with n. So zip basically takes multiple iterables and pairs their elements. But in this case, one of our iterables is much shorter than the other one. And what zip's default behavior is, is that it will just zip until the shortest iterable. So in this case, isn is our shortest iterable, so it'll only take the first three characters of x to match the full set of y, or the set of items in y. So this could be problematic depending on what your use case is. So that is why we have something called zip longest. Now what zip longest will do is that it'll make sure the longest iterable will be fully zipped. So in this case, it'll make sure that z is fully zipped with y and some default values. So if I run this, you'll see that since y only has three characters or three items, the rest have to be filled with some filler value. And in this case, the default filler value is none. So all of them are filled with none. However, we can fill them up with default values using the fill value parameter. And in this case, I will set that fill value parameter to default. So if we run this, you'll see now instead of none, we have default. So just a quick recap, we went over chain, chain formidable, and zip longest. Now chain allows you to chain multiple iterables, but chain takes multiple inputs. Chain from iterable, however, will only take a single input and it will unnest it. So if you have a single input full of lists, you can chain them together using chain from iterable. And the final one is zip longest. The default behavior of zip is to zip the shortest and cut off the rest. But with zip longest, you make sure the longest iterable is zipped and the shorter iterable will be filled with filler values to make sure that it properly zips with the longer iterable. All right, so those were the three iter tool functions we went over in this video. I'll see you guys in the next video.